This is ENP Reports, a service of editor and publisher magazine since 1884, the authoritative voice of news publishing. And hi again, I'm Mike Blinder, publisher of ENP. And there's an old joke. It starts off with how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? The answer is one, but the light bulb has to want to change in the first place. And we all know change is hard, uh, but change is necessary for, in order for us to stay ahead of the curve, the old expression, or the, uh, what was the famous quote from Wayne Gretzky, that the reason he's so good at his craft is he skates to where the puck is going. So we're gonna talk about change today in a good way. Uh, a newspaper nestled in the town of uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, called the Kentucky New Era. And uh, it's celebrating its 150th birthday. As a matter of fact, if you go to KentuckyNewEra.com and click on the About Us button, it says, we're the same age as Major League Baseball, the periodic table, Welch's, yes, the grape juice and jelly titan, and the company that brought us Campbell's chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Some of America's greatest proprietorships were launched in 1869, and the Kentucky New Era was part of that class. But it's not sitting on its laurels. The Kentucky New Era in 2018 was bought by Paxton Media Group, and change started. They refocused their journalistic effort to go hyper-local, if they may use that term. They moved into a new building downtown, where the editorial team actually has a view of Main Street, and more importantly, Main Street has a view of the editorial team. And they appointed a new publisher. His name is Brandon Cox. Brandon's been at the helm for a little while now, and he talks about that change, what they've accomplished so far, and where the Kentucky New Era this community newspaper is going. So let's join Evelyn Mateos, managing editor of Editor Publisher Magazine, as she goes one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Cox, the publisher of the Kentucky New Era. Thanks for joining us on EMP Reports, Brandon. So I'm gonna start by giving everyone a quick little overview here. In 2018, the Kentucky New Era was acquired by Paxton Media. Um, included in that sale also was Dawson Springs Progress, Princeton Times Leader, Providence Journal Enterprise, and Oak Grove Eagle Post. So since then, I know a lot has gone on to improve and unite these newsrooms. But whenever a publication is acquired by a new owner, you know, before that new owner or whoever's going to be leading um, – can kind of get in there, they need to ease that uncertainty, right? Um, so this is where you come in. What has that process kind of been like for you so far? Well, you know, it was very interesting. So uh, day one for me here in Hopkinsville was about two weeks post uh, close of the sale. Uh, I believe they closed the sale on December 1st of 2018, and I started on December 17th. So there were two weeks in between where it was kind of managed by committee. Uh, the group publisher that I work for now actually spent every day here during that time easing the company, uh, the new company into the existing company. And uh, when I got here on the 17th, uh, what I had to tell the staff was, you know, me personally have been through the buying and selling process a couple of times, uh, not so much as in leadership, but as a frontline employee. So I kind of knew what to expect and I could uh, kind of hold their hand, so to speak, and guide them through it. But also just reassure them that, um, that you know, change is hard, but at the same time, you grow from change. And, and a lot of what we were experiencing and, and the new things that they were being introduced to, while it was different from what they'd been doing for a number of years before, was actually all uh, to serve and help make the newsroom and the advertising operation, everything perform better in a way to where they can better serve the community. Um, it's just, it was two different business styles uh, from the old company to the new company. And, um, you know, walking through that transition and kind of being able to translate what was happening and what they were seeing, not only from the perspective of, of a manager, but from somebody who'd been there themselves throughout their career. I, I think it helped. It added some perspective. And, um, you know, we kept we kept the team intact for the most part. Uh, the people who were here the day I got here are mostly all still here. They, they stuck stuck it through and, and decided to, to buy in. So. Yeah, and I'm sure, um, you know, you're having experience 
you know, being where they have been probably helped with that, you know, and that communication. Would you agree? Is there any other ways, you know, that having that experience helped you? Oh, I'm sure. Um, you know, there's always a lot of uncertainty that comes with that type of thing. And, um, having been there before myself, I was able to kind of preemptively answer some questions like, Hey, this is going to happen. Um, this software is going to change, um, so to speak, or, or this process is going to change. And as a result, this is what's going to happen on the other side. This is why it's good for you as the employee, as the reporter, as the salesperson. And this is why ultimately it's better for the newspaper product and the community as a whole. So being able to communicate that up front, as opposed to, um, being reactive and and trying to play catch up the whole time, I think uh, benefited us greatly. Yeah. So um, once that uncertainty was kind of settled, what was your number one priority? Um, Taking a look at the resources that we had and the existing resources that the company had in the same region. Um, You know, normally when you buy uh, a group of papers, they're not so close to the main group that you already have. I I mean, maybe in other uh, situations for other companies, but for for Paxton, I believe that this was kind of unique um, because we had papers uh, literally the next county over. So mm-hmm. we had resources close enough by to where we could start integrating uh, newsrooms and sales efforts and things of that nature uh, to kind of alleviate some of the heavy lifting and 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 for instance wire copy and and things of that nature. How we could share stories uh, across the region. And, um, you know, somebody who used to be your competitor is now on your team. So everything good that they were doing, you can now benefit from. So uh, it was kind of taking inventory of what we had, uh, what was within reasonable distance and and what we could, um, not to use a buzzword here, but where we could find synergies and uh, and make and make everybody work together um, as opposed to a bunch of standalone operations. Great. Thank you. And so now I know. uh, you know, one of the other things that has been going on since you kind of came in and Paxton took over is um, a new office, right? Wow. So um, I know y- you just moved in. How is, uh, you know, everybody enjoying that new office? And if you don't mind giving us a little bit of background on, you know, where that is. Sure, sure. So um, everybody's really happy and pleased and, and we're pleased to be here in the new space. Uh, so some background, when, when Paxton purchased the operation, uh, they bought the, the publication and the assets, but not the real estate. So the former owner retained the real estate to sell separately. Um, so we had to find a new home. But aside from that, the home that we were in, uh, I think they've been there since the 1970s in that current building. Um, it was just too big for what we needed in this day and age. Um, you know, the business has changed so much and, and there was just so much square footage for processes that we don't do anymore and, and things that are, you know, we're sharing with other papers in our company. So, you know, we had a 19,100 square foot building for about 20 people and um, it was way too big and the utilities were quite expensive <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was just, um, you know, it was, it was in a good location. It's a nice building. It just wasn't like in the heartbeat of town and the main artery of where things were going on. And from an editorial perspective, we'd been covering and writing about um, downtown revitalization efforts. Uh, you know, the old theater down here was renovated. They're renovating the museum right now. There's opening restaurants on the main drag on the walkable strip downtown. And from our perspective, editorially we wanted to put our money where our mouth is so we decided to look downtown for a new home we wanted to be part of what we call the heartbeat of the community um, now finding that space downtown in in Hopkinsville was um, was challenging because we still needed certain things to make our business operate um, we wanted to be on the ground floor because we have a lot of walk-in customers and, and people coming in to buy papers place classified ads things of that nature um, so the ground floor was important to us, um, as well as having somewhere to receive delivery um, when the papers come in. You know, we're a five-day-a-week paper, so Tuesday through Saturday, I have to receive papers, and and a lot of our uh, outside printed magazines come straight here to the shop, and so we needed a dock with a roll-up door. So we kind of took inventory of what was downtown, and there was all of one building downtown that was on the ground floor with a roll-up door that was unoccupied. Um, but it was, um, dilapidated and very, 
um, needed a lot of love <laughs> and work. Um, thankfully, there's a developer here in town, uh, Hal McCoy is his name. Um, he, he decided to partner with us, and he purchased the building and uh, built the office to suit for us. And uh, so everything that is our new office is literally new. Um, every wall was put up since last March when we signed the deal. Um, all new LED lighting all the way throughout the building. Uh, new sign on the front door, new fascia. Uh, we're really excited about that. It looks really good from the street now. And uh, the building has some historical uh, context for the city. Uh, first, we're on Main Street, which is cool. We're directly across the street from City Hall, um, which we think is cool. Um, you know, we joke with the mayor about being able to keep an eye on them as a watchdog being right across the street. <laughs> but, um, but aside from that, uh, we're right in the middle of everything that's going on downtown. And the building itself, uh, for a number of years, was the J.C. Penney here in town. So when people ask where we're at, we can say corner of 8th and Main, across from uh, City Hall, or the old J.C. Penney. And everybody in Hopkinsville knows where we're at. Um, right. I've not yet have to give directions to this building because everybody knows what I'm That's talking nice. about. That's <laughs> right. nice. Um, but yeah, so we uh, partnered with him in March of last year, and I believe uh, construction began soon after. Um, he he was not sitting around, um, and we were in by the end of the year. So um, every wall is, like I said, brand new, blown in insulation and and uh, new carpet, new flooring. Uh, we got wood floors in some parts, carpet in the others. And he just built it to suit. He gave me a blank floor plan and so, said, draw your office space where you need what. And once I gave him a very poor drawing of what I thought it should look like, he handed it off to an architect and an engineer. And within eight months, it was a reality. Awesome. And you said there was one building on Main Street. Right. Yeah, there was one empty building. Uh, there were several that had the things we needed, but they were occupied and other people were using them. Uh, we gotcha. found one space that fit the bill uh, that was available. And um, we found a developer. It was meant to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, the guy who owned it didn't want to do the developing, um, but we found a developer that he was willing to sell the building to, to do all the work. It just kind of all fell into place uh, bit by bit, right at the right time. That's great. Yeah. And so now I also saw uh, the announcement and the new era kind of started off the new year with uh, an open house to this um, new office. So can you tell me a bit about, you know, that and what was the turnout like? Sure, sure. So um, I'll back up a little bit to talk about the open house and how we got here. We had really hoped to have it on November 16th of last year. Um, that was the day that this newspaper turned 150 years old. Uh, that's the day the edition changed. And and uh, we wanted to have our big open house in our new building on the same day we turned 150. And, and we had this whole big shebang planned. And then um, there were problems with permits and codes and inspections. And we couldn't get in the building in time <laughs> to do it. So we had to push it. Uh, we still had our 150th birthday, of course, but just not in our new home. Uh, what's interesting about where we're at, and I failed to mention a second ago, was we're literally on the same city block where this newspaper began 150 years ago. The old building, the original New Era building, is in our back parking lot. Um, if we walk out oh, our wow. back door, yeah, we're looking at the original. Uh, you could you could roll up a newspaper and throw it at it <laughs> and hit it. It's pretty wild. Uh, so we're we're when we say we went back to where we started, uh, we mean that literally. Uh, we are. In, we share a parking lot with the original building. Um, so that, that's pretty interesting and pretty cool. But we ended up pushing the open house to be in um, January. We got moved in about the week before Christmas. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge, moving the week of Christmas. Um, but uh, we got in and used the first week or two of the year to get set up and organized, unpacked, and, and still put a paper out every day, uh, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Uh, and then we had a um, we had an open house and a ribbon cutting with the local chamber, and it was really well attended. Uh, more than 120 people showed up that day and, and visited us and went through the building. Um, for us, it was important to open the doors up and let the public in. Uh, this is their newspaper, so we wanted them to see, you know, where we are now, how we do what we do, where we've come from, where we're going. Right. And um, you know, ribbon cuttings around here are well attended. Our chamber does a really good job. Um, 
so much so that we planned for about 60 people. So we didn't make enough cookies for everybody that showed up. <laughs> but we actually, uh, we had a food truck here parked out front, uh, serving the people that came in. Uh, there's actually a restaurant next door that makes a killer cheesecake. So we bought a couple cheesecakes from them uh, and just kind of made it a community event down here. It was pretty cool to see all the elected officials walking down the street from City Hall and the courthouse to come to our event. Um mm -hmm. Because we're right in the thick of it now. We're in the middle of everything. And, um, you know, I've seen 60, 80, 100 people at a ribbon cutting here, um, mainly new restaurants and things of that nature. But, you know, for a newspaper office, how exciting can it be? Um, turns out pretty exciting. So uh, about 120 people. We had, a, you know, the big ribbon out front and got the, the huge scissors and do the whole, do the whole thing. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we were glad to have people here. And as a result, we've had pretty good foot traffic every day since people coming in to see the place. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how many people actually like to come to the office to pay their monthly circulation bill or oh, what, wow. <laughs> as opposed to, you know, I mean, Netflix comes right off our credit cards, right? We don't even think about it, but yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of folks here in town still like to come in the front door and, and talk to a human and, and have that transaction and that relationship and that, that exchange. And uh, so we're real proud of what we have now as a result of that and the relationship we have with our community. Um, we're just so ecstatic to see that many people actually care about us and what we're doing and, and where we're going. Yeah, absolutely. So the new era is still letting, um, you know, residents in whenever they stop by. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, um, we, our front door is literally on Main Street. You can park six feet from the door, cross the sidewalk and come on in. So. That's great. Yeah. Did they have, um, and by the way, I've had to move buildings and put out a publication and it's not easy. So it not at all. <laughs> Congrats it, on it, that. It, yeah. It's it just not made easy. It even more interesting. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, the, the moving company, the local moving company we used was fantastic. They moved all of our furniture in one day. Um, so, you know, the staff came to work on Friday in the old building and when they left on a Friday afternoon, we moved everything, and when they came to work Monday, they came to work to the new building. Uh, quite a few of us actually went to the wrong building <laughs> the first day. Uh -oh. <laughs> but uh, so, um, did you know the visitors have any questions um, for you on you know the opening day, or you know everyone else that's stopped by since then? Well, uh, a lot of people wanted to know mainly. Um, how many local people participated in what you did here? And our contractor was great. Um, and our developer, we met with them early on before, after we drew up the plans, before we hired a single sub and said, we want to use as many local people as we can. And so the plumbing's local, the lighting's local, all the fixtures came from a local um, vendor. Um, if it could be found locally and sourced locally, it was done locally. And, and we believe being the local newspaper, that was very important. So that's the biggest question people asked. Um, you know, I had one person um, jokingly in all of how nice our new building is, ask if his subscription rate was going to go up as a result <laughs> to, to pay for it. But, but no, um, it's, uh, it's been really cool. And the way we've designed the layout, um, you walk in, you're met, in a, you're in a vestibule, and you turn left to go into, or turn right to go into our building, excuse me, our side of the building, and you're met with a reception desk. And, and Cynthia's fantastic. She, everybody in the community knows her. She's been here for 30 some odd years. But as soon as you're past her, you're in the newsroom, literally. Um, so, you know, a lot of bu buildings I've been in, we've put advertising up front because we want to make money off anybody that walks in the door, right? But we right. decided to put the newsroom up front for two reasons. One, I'm, I'm not going to lie, the way the building was laid out, it worked. It was the biggest space to put the most people. But second of all, um, I just think it's important that somebody driving down the street, because our front is all glass windows. You can see it from the road. I want people to see news happening in their community. I want them to see reporters covering what's going on in their community. Their friends and neighbors are the ones that are that are reporting out on these things and, and holding power to account and searching for truth in every nook and cranny in their community. So uh, that's who I wanted to highlight and put up front for everybody to see was you know, this team of journalists who take their job seriously aren't, you know, somebody from far away. They're not flying and, and leave once the story's over type people. Uh, they're the people you go to church with. They're the people you see at the grocery store and your kids play t-ball with them. So that's who we wanted up front. So. 
Awesome. Yeah, I like that approach, you know, because it's um, I like to think of journalists as also serving a duty like okay. firefighters do or police officers do. And we always see them around our neighborhoods. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but with journalists, it's people don't always pay attention. They're not always actively like that's a journalist. Right. right. So well, I like that approach. I don't want to put a, a blanket stereotype over anybody, but um a lot of journalists I've worked with aren't the most extroverted people in the world. <laughs> so right. unless they're right. wearing a press pass, they don't walk up and say, Hey, I'm a journalist. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Seeing them sitting in the newsroom kind of, Oh, that's what, who that person is. That's what that person does. Or yeah. I see the byline every day. Now I have a name to go with the face. So, um, that awesome. kind of thing. Great. Thank you. So now I'm going to switch gears a little bit here because sure. I know, um, one of the other big things kind of going on at the new era is we got a new um, editor, right? Mm-hmm. So that's Zirconia, and I don't know if I'm going to say her last name right, Eileen? Eileen, uh-huh. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, when she took over and what that's been like for the newsroom? Sure. So uh, when Paxton Media bought the newspaper and the associated weeklies that came with it, uh, the former owner was serving as the editor of the paper. Well, obviously, when he sold it, he was no longer um, part of the newsroom. Uh, he, he left that role as well in, in the uh, acquisition. So, like I said, I, I'd been here about two weeks. Um, I got here mid-December, and I think it was the week of Christmas of 2018 that Zirconia had taken a week off work. We hadn't yet filled the editor's role. We had posted it. We'd interviewed a couple people, um, but we just, it was still open at that point in time. Uh, Zirconia took a week of vacation and I'd only been here a couple days, two weeks, and it became painfully obvious who was running the show uh, when she wasn't here. And that's not to disparage anybody that, that was here aside from her. It's just, um, you know, it was obvious that she was the one organizing and coordinating and all those things. And in fact, many of the internal candidates that we interviewed for the role all told us, you should hire Zirconia. Um, so it was like, wow. well, let's give her an interview. <laughs> and, uh, and sure enough, she blew us away. She's a local girl. She's from Hopkinsville. So uh, born and raised, well, not born here. She was a military kid, uh, but we're not far from military base. And she ended up here as a child and, um, and s- grew up here. Uh, she went to college about an hour, hour and a half away at Western Kentucky University, which is a great journalism school, by the way, and uh, decided to come home. Um, you know, a lot of smaller communities, that's what they want. They want people to go to college, but then they want them to come back and, and, and bring what they learned in college to their hometowns or communities and become a, you know, a contributing part of that yeah. work and generation. Well, she chose to do that and she came back. Um, she started as a reporter a few years ago, uh, ended up as the features editor. She was in charge of magazines, the food section, the religion and values section on the weekends, those type of things. And then, um, as the editor's role kind of backed out, so to speak, uh, as he was processing and getting ready to sell the paper, um, it's not like he told everybody in the newsroom that's what he was doing, but he started delegating a lot more. And uh, as a result, Zirconia's role grew. And before long, she was doing the job. So when she got back from vacation, she was already doing the job. We gave her a raise in the title <laughs> and, and, and told her to keep up the great work. So, Was she surprised at all? She was, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think she... Um, she absolutely deserved it and, and, and still deserves it. She's fantastic. And, and you know, what, all you can ask for as a publisher is to not have to worry every day about the news and, and let that be in somebody else's hand. Um, and, and I trust her implicitly. I don't worry about it. She's never surprised me with a headline. I know about it before it publishes, if it's going to be something that I, you know, might get phone calls about or something of that nature. Um, but, you know, she's fair, she's accurate, and she can lead. The team is rallied around her. In fact, they wanted her to get the job before she got the job. So, you know. Oh, that's it, aw- it, yeah, that's a- awesome when you have the newsroom, you know, supporting her. Right, yeah. So now she's also potentially the first black female editor of a daily newspaper in the state. So yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how did that discovery come about? And what was it like for not just Zirconia, but everyone to kind of realize that? 
Yeah, well, so Hopkinsville is a very diverse city um, in Kentucky. Um, when you think of Kentucky, the first thing you don't really ever think of is diversity, but, um, but Hopkinsville as a city is very diverse, and it, especially for a smaller city in Kentucky. And, and it's got a rich journalism background as well. Um, there's a very uh, famous journalist from Hopkinsville. His name's Ted Poston. And um, I may get this wrong because I'm not born and raised here, but I believe he is the first um, black journalist to work for a major national daily. I think he's the New York Daily News. Um, and he covered issues of um, segregation and, and, and um, civil rights and those things during that time period. Um, so this community has a connection not only to journalism, but to black journalism. And there was an event not long after I got here um, honoring an African-American journalist from the area. And it just kind of sparked the question in our minds, like, I wonder, um, you know, is Zirconia is unique in and of herself and, and her role and the way she carries it. But is there something here we don't know about? We reached out to the local, uh, the State Press Association, and the answer we got back was, she's the first and only that I know of. Um, now, a lot of, lot of newspapers over the last 150 years have come and gone. Um, there have been um, a number of black newspapers in Hopkinsville, but as far as we know, they were all run by men. And the same around the state. Um, you know, we know of a sports editor at a, uh, another daily paper in the state that was a black female. Uh, we know of an Asian female editor at a daily, um, but nobody else has been able to produce a name for us of a black female editor at a daily newspaper in Kentucky. So um, we don't really tout that and, and, and broadcast that so much because again, it's nearly impossible to prove, but as far as we know, and as far as the state press association's executive director is concerned, she's the first and only. And uh, so it's a big deal and we're proud yeah. of it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And um, it's really exciting. You know, that's uh, I know, as you said, you don't tout it too much because it can't be, you know, exactly proven. But I mean, it's still really great to see, you know, those steps being made. And, you know, that well, type today, of no one has disputed it either. So um, she'll take that as a win. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome. So now, um, you know, you got New, roos, new newsroom, excuse me. You got a new editor um, getting settled in. Uh, what's next for the new era? You know, we, um, we've got a lot of regional papers within our own group, within Paxton Media, um, that all had their own little hubs, motherships way uh, of doing things. And they're all within 60 miles of each other. And there's two dailies in that range, uh, Hopkinsville and Madisonville both. Um, you know, the Madisonville group had their own publisher and he retired at the end of last year. And it just kind of made sense since Hopkinsville is now part of the company to kind of blend those groups together and see where there's more opportunities. Um, for instance, I've got an editor out sick in Madisonville today, uh, 27 miles down the road and somebody from Hopkinsville has stepped in to help out and make sure that the newsroom still has the guidance and, and what they need to get tomorrow's paper out. Um, a, a year ago, we wouldn't have been able to do that because we weren't, we were the same company, but we weren't the same group, so to speak. Um, we're, we're continuing to build this group mentality among the eight papers that are within this five county region. Um, and, and it's really going well. Um, it's kind of bizarre. We had a major story, um, uh, in December, um, and it happened here in Hopkinsville. I picked up the Madisonville paper and they ran the AP report instead of ours. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh wow. <laughs> okay. Um, that doesn't happen anymore <laughs> with the way our, our group works because now we're sharing stories before it even hits the AP, before it hits the wire. We're letting the other editors know, heads up, this is what I'm working on. Uh, we had one last week, <laughs> Um, I, I wish it was more good news, right? <laughs> but we had a lady uh, last week in the next county over um, decide to light, um, I think it was light her ex-husband's trailer on fire or something of that nature. It was, uh, it was a big story. Um, but instead of waiting for the wire copy to come to our paper down the road, it was actually somebody from our team who was already over there because we're a group now. And, uh, and we had the story before they hit the wire and, and things of that nature. We're just, we're finding more opportunities to work together. And then even from an advertising standpoint, um, 
you know, we can send one sales rep into a business now and lay out eight different publications and say, right. you know, instead of having eight sales meetings with all these different publications, you can have one with me and take care of it all at once. So it's easier on our on our customers. Um, our salespeople are, are able to grow their business and their income as a result. And, you know, instead of everybody doubling up and hitting all these different people. I mean, we've literally had salespeople run into each other at the same business before. Um, and that doesn't have, we're able to diversify and spread our time out and, and spread out geographically better. And, and our territories are, have shifted as a result. And, you know, it, it's opening new opportunities for new people to do business with us. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. It's kind of like creating your own little network. Right. Right. And then aside from that, uh, you asked what was next. Our, our big project this year is a real focus on digital. Um, uh, our website has always been, you know, updated every day. We push the stories to the web. And, you know, in the past, we used to wait until the, the print edition came out. Now, once it's done and edited, it's up. And we don't make people wait till midnight to log on and read it, that kind of thing. Uh, we're pushing stories in real time, which sounds so... Um, so common sense and pedestrian, but you know, you can find out a lot, a lot of places still aren't doing that. And, and it's worked well for us to do that. And I would encourage anybody else to do that as well, but we're also really digging into the data. Um, who's reading our websites? When are they reading our websites? Where are they going on our websites? Where are they going from or where are they coming to our websites from? And we're really studying a lot of that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of uh, this newspaper in Hopkinsville. Hopkinsville is a community of 35,000. It's it's not giant by any means. We had over a half million page views last month, which, you know, is probably not much to some people, but it's a lot for us. And, and you know, we're trying to understand what those half million page views are, who were the people that gave us those page views, and, and how do we continue to better serve them? Because... Um, I love a print newspaper. I pick one up every morning, uh, but I'm also not naive enough to think that digital is not going to play a huge part of our future. So right. we're spending time on that this year, and that's that's really one of our main focuses. So. Gotcha. Well, great. Um, thank you so much, and I wish you know the new era and all the other publications the best of luck with uh, the network and the focus on digital. Mm -hmm. um, and again, thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us on EMP Reports. Yeah, thanks for having me.